Oh my god, I'm so blonde! Hello everyone, she is back, she is blonder. This is the blondest that my hair has been in a while, like a good few years, and I love it, let me know what you think. Today, I have got some drugstore dupes for all of these lovely products. Some of them are tried and tested, and some of them are supposed to be dupes, but I've not actually tried them yet. So we're gonna learn some things in this video together. If you like this kind of content, please give this a thumbs up, and feel free to subscribe, I would love to have you. Let's get into it! What the hell is going on with my necklaces? So the first thing that I actually got sent as a dupe, and they had the product that they're trying to dupe, in the PR package as well. This Nivea Soft Cream, which is for face, body, and hands, is supposedly a dupe of the Embryolisse Lay Creme Concentrate. I did have this already, so I didn't crack into the one that they sent me, but they literally put these side by side in a box, and I was thinking, are they allowed to do that? I usually use the sensitive version of this, however, I ran out of my sensitive one, and I still had tons of the original one left, so I'm just gonna hope that this is okay. I mean, I'm not allergic to anything in here, I think it's just the fragrance of it that sometimes irritates my skin, but at the moment, my skin barrier is doing pretty good, so hopefully... It's fine. So I'm gonna do the high end on this side and the drugstore on this side. This Nivea cream, I think is only a couple of quid. Oh, it really smells like Nivea. The texture of this one feels a little bit more gel-like. I don't really know actually if that's the best way to describe it, but they feel slightly different in texture. Okay, let's blend them in. What I really like about the Ember Elise one is that it sinks into your skin really nicely. It doesn't kind of make your makeup peel off or anything weird, but it is so hydrating. It's one of my favorite moisturizers actually that I've ever tried. And it's also not too too oily which is amazing so if you've got kind of like combination skin if you've got dry patches it's so good for putting on dry patches before you put on foundation it just feels great so let's blend in the Nivea one hmm this one feels a little bit thinner in texture almost like it's melting down a little bit more and it feels yeah more gel like than the formula of the Embryo Lease. I don't know the Nivea one feels a lot more slippery and like liquidy whereas this one is more rich does that make sense yeah I'm not gonna lie they do not feel the same oh Hang on, wait, oh my god, the oh, wait, hang on, this Nivea one is sort of drying and it's starting to feel like it's getting a bit tacky. Do you have glycerin? Ingredients, number one, aqua, number two, glycerin. Although I'm not gonna lie to you, any cream that says it's for face, body, and hands, I just immediately think it's gonna break me out, so hopefully this doesn't, because I've got a wedding to go to this weekend. <laughs> I mean, my skin's breaking out already as it is, so I guess... What's one more? I mean, obviously they look similar on the skin because it's a moisturizer. It has moisturized my face, but I will say, actually now that this one's sunk in a bit and it sort of feels like it's dried down a little bit, they do feel more similar. But when you're first blending it in, the Ember Release one definitely feels a bit more rich. They both have quite a strong scent and I don't particularly like either of the scents. I think the Ember Release one looks slightly less oily. The Nivea one, yeah, you can kind of see here. The Nivea one feels a little bit more oily on my skin. So maybe not one for oily skin. The next one is a dupe for the Ilia Super Serum Skin Tin. I love this stuff. A lot of people complain about the smell of this and they say that it stinks and they can't use it. I don't think it smells that bad. Like, it doesn't seem to have a fragrance. I think it's just like the smell of the ingredients, but it's not that bad. It just kind of smells like makeup. Like, I don't know, don't really get it. This is so expensive. I bought this from Sephora when we first uh, got Sephora in the UK. And for a product that is so expensive, the packaging is awful because it just leaks everywhere. Like every time I put this in my bag it like drips out the sides of it and I'm like why are you doing that so it's like all around the edges here which really frustrates me but this is such a nice product if you want to see like this all over my face go check out my Sephora full face video I've actually nearly used this up and I use this a lot when I don't have fake tan on because it's pretty much the perfect color match and something that really reminded me of this is the Maybelline one when I first tried this on this is the shade 5.5 and then I've got the Ilia one in the shade ST4 Formosa is that the shade it reminded me of this quite a lot, so I'm gonna do a side-by-side -side comparison, which I've not done yet. I think the Ilia one is a slightly thinner formula. Yeah, it's a little bit more liquidy, as you can see. But oh my god, like, even for this, that is enough of it. The thing that I love about this is that it just, I mean, the shade match is perfect, and it just kind of melts into your skin and looks like skin. It also has like hyaluronic acid in it, I think. It's got niacinamide, it's got squalane. How nice does that look on my skin? It looks like my skin, but it's just given me some coverage. And then the Maybelline one, I'm gonna take the shade 5.5, do the same. This one is a little bit thicker, and I think this shade is gonna be slightly darker, but we'll see. Let me just wipe my brush off on my hand. <laughs> To be fair, this is also a really good shade match. You know what? As I'm blending it out, I think those shades are really similar. Oh, I'll be right back. That was nice. It was me mum. Does anyone else do this? That whenever somebody rings on the doorbell, whatever is in my hand, and for me it was my makeup brush, I just chuck it somewhere random and put it down, go answer the door, then I come back and I'm like, where the hell did I put it? And it's normally somewhere really weird. I've literally lost my makeup brush. 
Found it. I hadn't quite finished blending the Maybelline one and it does kind of dry down a little bit, which is the difference between this one and the Ilia one, which I guess is how it has got like the lasting power. This is the Maybelline and this is the Ilia. You know what? Now that I actually have these on my face, obviously the color is pretty similar. The Maybelline one is slightly darker. This one is more sheer and more glowy. The Maybelline one has more coverage and is slightly less glowy. They are both very lovely skin tints. I like both of them a lot, but it's definitely not an identical dupe. I'm just gonna conceal using the Too Faced concealer. <laughs> What's new? Oh my God, somebody told me, one of you guys told me that Too Faced has changed the formula of the Born This Way concealer. Please tell me that that is not true. And has anyone tried the new formula? Because if it's not as good, I don't actually know what I'll do because this is my favorite concealer ever, ever, ever. This is the shade Swan. I will actually be fuming if they have changed the formula and it sucks. This spot just does not want to be covered. It's fine, I'll touch it up with some powder foundation or something. Next is the main reason that I'm filming this video. Chanel Collection, 40 something pounds or 50 pounds. I don't even, I, I can't remember what I paid for this, but. Uh shit ton of money. This was under a tenner and it is a pretty much like visually the packaging is so similar. It is a cream bronzer and if you actually have a look inside of here, look at that. That's the collection one and the Chanel one is also, well it was, it was a swirly kind of design. I've obviously used mine but they look very similar. It's not just about the packaging, it's about the formula, it's about how they both perform. Oh my god, on the back of my hand they feel really similar. I'm going in with the Chanel one first and unfortunately I never really use this just because it's so light and I just have other bronzers that I prefer. Like it's nice, don't get me wrong, it blends like a dream and it's like a nice subtle bronzy colour but I can only use this when I don't have fake tan on. It's a very nice subtle bronze. So on this side, let me just, and I'm going to dip into the collection one. Oh my god. In terms of the level of pigmentation, they've got it pretty spot on because they're both very, very natural. Holy shit. Oh my god, you guys. What the hell? I have to say, usually with the drugstore dupes, they don't do them as well in terms of formula. Can you tell the difference? Because I actually can't. Wait, give me a mirror. They are so similar. Like, so, so, so similar. Oh my god. They both blend like a dream, and the colour they have got pretty much spot on. I think the collection one is a tiny bit darker, and the Chanel one is a touch more pink toned. But when you actually put them on your skin, what the hell? Hell, they literally look the same. I think that's actually one of the best drugstore dupes that I've ever discovered. If this isn't sold out already, I think it's about to be. Let me just check the product level because sometimes the high-end ones have way more product. Chanel has got 30 grams. Collections also got 30 grams. Oh shit, guys, this is gonna sell out quick. It's probably already sold out. How many brands are gonna try and dupe the Charlotte Tilby Pinkgasm? Every single one of them, apparently. I didn't rate the collection ones. I tried those in a previous video and I just didn't really think that they were very similar. This is the Rimmel Kind and Free Creamy Blusher in 01 Power Pink. This one just has a little squeezy thing, so the packaging is a little bit more difficult. But again, I've not done a side by side comparison on my face. I have on my hand though, and they look really bloody similar. The Charlotte Tilbury one gets so freaking messy though. Ah, because you can't get it to go back in. And I've just squeezed too much and I can't get it back in and now that's going to be all in the lid. Great. In terms of product comparison, you get 12 mil in the Charlotte Tilbury and you get 15 mil in the Rimmel. What a slay. So let's do the Charlotte Tilbury side first. I'm a big fan of this blush. I know a lot of people don't like it and they don't think it's worth the money. I personally really like it and would repurchase it. I love the glow that it gives. And then for the Rimmel one, I'm actually going to take it on the back of my hand and then I'm just going to dip into this. The colours are very, very similar. The Rimmel one doesn't have as much glow as the Charlotte Tilbury one, but in terms of the colour, they've got it pretty spot on, I've got to say. Let me see if I can get more glow if I actually apply it directly to my face, because my hand looks more glowy than my face does. Yeah, I feel like the glow level just isn't quite the same. <gasps> oh, oh my god, that was loads. I forgot that I just squeezed out so much. Oh god, so you idiot. Oh, I've just wasted so much product. But yeah, the actual colour, can't really tell the difference. I love finding a good dupe. This makes me so excited. They both look really pretty. Um, Just yeah, more glow. Less glow. And the formula doesn't go really sticky and patchy and weird. It's actually pretty blendable because that's the only thing that I found with a lot of dupes of Charlotte Tilbury. They are too sticky and they don't blend very well. This one actually blends well. Thumbs up from me. I'm just gonna set my face, do my eyebrows, and then I'll be right back. Oh my god, as well, I just have to tell you guys, I went to a Maybelline event the other day and it was a really, really insightful 
event actually they're teaming up with a like mental health charity called ditch the label where you can if you're between the ages i think it was of 12 and 25 this isn't sponsored by the way i just thought i'd let you know if you are between the ages of 12 and 25 and struggling with your mental health you can actually get support off of ditch the labels website for free from a trained professional which is really cool um i think that's great and i wish that something like that existed when i was younger as well so take full advantage of that if you need it but what i was gonna say is at this maybelline event the other day i finally asked the girls from maybelline why don't we have the fit me loose powder in the uk because it's amazing and it's like one of my favorite powders ever and when i was in paris with maybelline some of you guys messaged me like soph while you're there speak to the maybelline team about why we don't have the fit me loose powder in the different shades and so i did just that i spoke to them about it and and who knows if they will do something about it, but watch this space, I guess. We'll see if they take on mine and your feedback. But they were very interested to hear that, so we could be onto something. I'll keep you posted. The next dupe is for one of my favorite products in the world, the Makeup by Mario Master Crystal Reflector in Quartz. This is just stunning, and also as well, something similar, the Fenty Diamond Bomb. I don't have the original shade of it, but I have swatched it, and it's very, very similar to the Makeup by Mario one. I think this collection one is supposed to be a dupe of the Fenty one, judging by the packaging. And I have tested this in a video, but I've not compared it to the Makeup by Mario one yet, so that's what I'm gonna do. You know what? I might put on a little bit of eyeshadow. Thanks. We've had all the mothers today. That was James's mum at the door. I'm just gonna use this this tiny little elf palette, maybe take a bit of this one. Yeah, I don't really think that shade is dark enough to actually show up. I'm just gonna do a bit of Benefit Hula, just to give a little bit of depth. And then let's wing that out a little bit. Also, I just realized that I never covered that spot. I'm just taking some of the Maybelline Superstay powder. Should have definitely done that before I did my blush, but oh well. And then just gonna dip into this dark brown color and do my usual, this is kind of like the classic makeup that I do for any kind of event now because it's so easy. Just a bit of dark brown on the outer corners of my eye and then give it a little smudge. Then obviously doing the Makeup by Mario one on this eye. And I've used this so often on my channel that you're probably sick of me talking about it, but it's just like a wash of glitter. And it's the perfect thing to just add on top of any eye look. And then let's do the collection one in comparison. This one feels slightly more dry in formula. I mean, they're both powder formula. Well, kind of, yeah, powder formulas, I guess, but it doesn't feel like a regular powder. It's very similar. The main difference is the Makeup by Mario one has got slightly chunkier pieces of glitter, but still not chunky by any means, but the actual glittery particles are slightly bigger whereas the collection ones are slightly finer so I feel like it looks a little bit less sparkly like if you actually compare them I think the makeup by Mara one definitely wins and is slightly sparklier so there is definitely a difference there, but obviously there's also a big difference in price. So if you're on a budget, this does a very similar thing. Also, the collection one seems to be falling off a little bit more. Like I said, the formula is slightly drier. I think the Makeup by Mario one almost feels like it's bonded together a little bit more. I'm just gonna curl my lashes. Before I put my mascara on, I have a setting spray dupe. This is the Urban Decay All Nighter. This one has got like fancy packaging and it has a different scent, but it is the All Nighter. And the dupe that I have for this is the Maybelline Lasting Fix Makeup Setting Spray. To be honest, there are so many good drugstore setting sprays. Like the e.l.f. one is amazing. The Revolution ones are amazing. The Superdrug own brand one is amazing. The Beauty Crop do some great ones. However, I've been using this quite a lot recently and I kind of realized this is purple with a black lid. This is black with a purple lid. I feel like maybe they were hinting that they were trying to dupe the all-nighter. I'm going to do one swatch on this arm. Actually, you know what? Let's do it. I'm going to do it on the back of my hand. Why do I always do it on my arm? Your hand is so much easier to rinse the product off and also to show you why do i always do it on my arm exactly the same two different swatches of eyeshadow maybelline on that side and the all-nighter on this side let's also do a little I've got to say, both of them also have quite a strong mist. Since I put that bronzer on my face, I realised that my neck now does not match the rest of me. I don't have a high-end mascara to dupe. Generally, I prefer drugstore mascaras anyway. These have both dried. Moment of truth. I mean, I know for a fact that the Urban Decay one does not go anywhere. It's one of the best in the game. It's incredible. Let's try the Maybelline one. 
The one thing I will say is the Urban Decay one seems to dry a little bit more matte. Like it feels like there's almost like a film over your skin. The Maybelline one is a little bit more shiny. I don't know if you can see that, but they both have held up so well. I would say it's a pretty good dupe. Then my final dupe of today, I was so happy to discover this. This is a dupe for the MAC Spice Lip Liner. This was by complete coincidence. Recently, I bought a few new lip liners from L'Oreal just to test them out. And one of them, when I was putting it on, I thought this feels very familiar. This is the L'Oreal Color Riche Lip Liner in the shade 107 Cyan Sunset. That's the L'Oreal one. The MAC one is above, the L'Oreal one is on underneath. They literally look the same to me. Maybe the MAC one is a tiny bit darker, but just you wait until these are on my lips. L'Oreal. And then MAC. Sorry, where is the difference? They've literally like connected into each other. And in my opinion, I, I can't tell the difference. Let's actually fill in my lips with it. Maybe then we'll see more of a difference. They are so similar. I think the MAC one is just a tiny bit darker, especially once you've gone over the top with a gloss or something. I'm just gonna put some lip gloss on. Yep, looks the same. So now that I've done my whole face, oh my God, I didn't put on highlighter. The fact that I was always known for my highlighter. In the past couple of videos, I have forgot to put highlighter on. Let's just put on a bit of this Beauty Bay palette. I'm using the pink shade. Oh my god, and I didn't put blush on my nose. Can you tell the difference in my face? Because I can't. So that is me done. That is me testing out those dupes. There are some bloody good ones in this video, I've got to say. You do not need to spend tons of money on makeup for it to look nice on your face. Obviously, it's nice to have, but is it necessary? No. So I hope this video was helpful. If it was, please give this a thumbs up. And if you like this kind of content, feel free to subscribe. I make these kind of videos quite often. I love me some drugstore makeup. And I hope you guys are doing really good. I will see you in my next video. Bye.